Thank you very much. Wow, what a crowd. Look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, before we begin, I have to tell you that runway is like an ice skating rink. And the first step, I said, you know, this sucker is slippery. I think it was put in by the Democrats over the like, That's why. I don't know whoever the hell got that thing. That's not, that's a trap. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like ridiculous. You know what I'm saying there for? Don't pay the bill. Okay. Because that is crazy, fellas. So next time, you know, we don't want to have that. Can you imagine if I went down, the press would have a field day for weeks and weeks. They'd say, he went down. He finally, he made a mistake. Look at that. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Well, I just want to say, hello, Panama City Beach. It's a nice place. We had some... We had some great times here. You remember before that, that great election, that great, great election, 16, right? 16. And now we have 20 coming up. Who would believe? November 3rd, not November 8th. It's November 3rd, and it's going to be just as special as November 8th. It's going to be just as special. And in certain ways, I can't say it's more important, but it's equally as important because we've made strides like no country has made strides. What's happened to our country? But we had a great time and we had some incredible rallies right here. And we're working really hard for you and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Things are going well, okay? Well, you got hit with a little hurricane called Michael. That was not a nice hurricane, I can tell you that, but it's going well. And I'm thrilled to be here with really, truly incredible men and women of the Florida Panhandle. My friends, your strength and devotion and values are what truly make America great and what make America run. You know that. You love our country, you're proud of our history, and you always respect our great American flag. Right? So I was last here in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Michael. You remember, we came, that was pretty bad stuff. And I pledge to you unwavering support and the support of our nation until you have fully recovered and rebuilt. And we will never, ever leave your side. We've already given you billions of dollars, and there's a lot more coming as you do it. And to support your recovery from Hurricanes Michael and Irma, the federal government has committed more than $10 billion to the state of Florida. That's committed. It's all committed. And Rick Scott and your new governor is a great governor. Rick was great. Ron DeSantis is great. So now Rick has gone on to the Senate along with Marco Rubio, and they're all working. We're all working together. And things are going good for you and for our country. Thank you. I love you, too. Thank you. That's the guy, but I love him, all right? Wherever the hell you are, I love him. And tonight, I'm pleased to announce that my administration will be allocating $448 million in HUD disaster recovery funds for the great people of Florida. And these dollars will help communities get back on their feet. We've already given you many, many millions of dollars, but these are additional monies that are coming in to help the families put their lives together. Some families are still working very hard. It's been a tough one. More money is needed. I've just come from a stop at Tyndall Air Force Base where I saw the devastating effects of that Category 5 hurricane. Category 5. Never heard about Category 5s before. Category 5 is big stuff. Tyndall was scheduled 
as you know, by the military to close. You know that, right? You know that? And I got a call from your great representatives, and they said, President, they want to close Tyndall because it got beat up badly. It got beat. In fact, we have our best planes there. The F-22, it's incredible, incredible fighter jet, the most beautiful plane I think I've ever seen. And some of them were damaged, but we lost none. We lost none. Seven were very badly damaged. They lost none. And the military had it scheduled to be closed, and I heard about it. And I made a couple of calls. And I said, General, why are we doing that? Those people are incredible. Those people, they work. They're just outstanding. I said, General, why are we doing it? And they said, you know, it was damaged. I said, so what are we going to do? Build a new, a new one someplace else at a bad location? I said, we have thousands of people. We're going to end up having 8,000 people back there working soon. We're rebuilding the whole place. And we're doing the job. And we're actually moving in the F-35 fighter jet, which is the newest and the best in the world. And we got a lot of them. We've got a lot of them. And uh, they're going to be moving in. So we're going to have actually many more people working at Tyndall than you had the day before the hurricane. Okay? So be prepared. And they're doing drawings and they're doing architecture of different areas. We're building some new buildings. We're fixing some old good ones that got very badly hurt, but structurally they're sound. And when we're finished, it's going to be something that's really special, one of the best anywhere in the country, okay? And you have something very special. I was with Colonel Laidlaw, who runs it. You know him? Oh, good. He's a good man. And he was telling me the reasons, and he said, we fly right over the ocean. We get up, we fly right out over the ocean. When you do that, sir, you can do a lot more than when you're flying over people's houses. We know that feeling, too. So it's great, and it's going to be fantastic. In the wake of the terrible storm, this extraordinary community pulled together and showed the world your unbreakable spirit. I'm down here a lot. I knew that long before the storms, by the way. And you've also seen countless volunteers and visitors, students and faith groups coming here to lend a hand to help, like almost no place else you can imagine. And of course, people are still traveling from around the world to enjoy your sun. I happen to be one of them, by the way. And your sand and your pristine waters, which is exactly what you have, because Panama City Beach is open for business, as beautiful as ever. And today I'm doing the most allowed by law to support the people of Florida, because of the severity of this storm, Category 5, we will have the federal government pay for 90% of the cost in many circumstances. 90%. And we can do that because of the incredible devastation and the size of that storm. So now we need Democrats in Congress to work with us to pass an acceptable bill we're getting close. It's pretty tough dealing with it. They don't want to build a wall, but we're building the wall. They don't want to do a lot of other things. They don't want to do a lot of things. So we're building a lot of things. We're doing a lot of things, and that includes additional Hurricane Michael relief funding immediately. The money is coming immediately. No games, no gimmicks, no delays. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. And by the way, FEMA, my people at FEMA, FEMA did a tremendous job here and elsewhere, by the way. They had this, they had Texas, they had Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico got $91 billion, and I understand they don't like me. It's the most money we've ever given to any, anybody. We've never given 91 billion to a state 
We've never given. We gave to Puerto Rico 91 billion. And I'll tell you, the services, you look at the Marines, you look at the Navy, the job they did there was really incredible. 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 In fact, I brought a chart. Would you like to see a chart? And very haphazardly, I just happened to have it with me. So there's your chart. Does everyone see that? So now... See, I didn't want to spend on a big board because that costs the government too much money. I want to say But you can all see that. So that's Puerto Rico and they don't like me. Texas, Florida, the biggest hurricanes we've ever seen. Texas, Florida. But this, and what the Democrats want to do, they want to give more and more. And I say, you know what? I have a great relationship with the people of Puerto Rico, but it hasn't been fair the way they've treated all of us from the standpoint of their leaders. Because they complain they want more money. They got 91 billion. It's the largest amount of money ever given for a hurricane, to a state, to any element, and that's the way it is. But you're getting your money one way or the other, and we're not going to let anybody hold it up. And I think that the people of Puerto Rico are very grateful to Donald Trump for what we've done for them. That was a bad, that was a bad storm. And, you know, with, with Florida, thank you, with Florida, you drive on. You have your, you drive on. With Puerto Rico, it's a little tougher. It's called, it's called, yeah, it's called you get into a boat or you get into something. But they did a hell of a job, including bringing the biggest hospital ship in the world right off the island. So I want to thank the military. I want to thank FEMA for what they did there, for what they did in Florida, Texas. You look at Louisiana, look at South Carolina, they got hit hard. North Carolina got a piece of it. Georgia, Alabama, these are great places, and they're all getting aid, but the Democrats are trying to stop it, but you're getting it. Don't worry. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. And you've already gotten a lot of it, so that's good. Instead of wasting time, energy, taxpayer dollars on partisan stunts and hoaxes and witch hunts, Democrats should be focused on building up our country. Did you see what just happened, by the way? No collusion. No obstruction. No anything. Two years on a witch hunt. I could have gotten anybody in this audience. I could have found something on you. Two years. Almost $40 million. 20 Trump haters, Democrats. I call them angry Democrats. After two years, nothing. No collusion. And now the Democrats, we have a great attorney general, now the Democrats are saying, we want more. You know, it was going to be like, we want the Mueller report. Now they say, uh, Mueller report? No, we want to start all over again. It is a disgrace. We got to focus on infrastructure. We have to focus on lowering medical prices and medicine. Always focus on our military and our vets, which we've done. And the Democrats really should be focused now on restoring and helping the Emerald Coast of Florida, because that's what it is. It's time to come together for the people of Panama City, for the people of Florida, for the people of our country. It's time to stop this nonsense. They think they're going to win. Did you see the one man? He said, it's the only way we're going to beat him in 2020. They have to do this. The only way they go, well, that's a compliment, I guess. But think of what he said. It's the only way they're going to beat me. And actually, it's working the other way, because now we have our best poll numbers that we've ever had. It's crazy. It's crazy. So we want to work with them, and we want to do infrastructure. We want to do all of the things that you know about, and we're going to get it done. Nobody's done so much as all of us, because it's not just me. I'm a messenger. I've done a good job as a messenger. Yeah. 
I've done a good job, but you've done a great job because you came from all over. You came from all over. You voted. They didn't know you. They didn't know that you folks existed in many cases. The invisible people. And you know what you are? You're the smartest. You're the hardest working. You pay your taxes. You do all of this stuff. Great jobs. Great talents. You're the best looking people, that's for sure. You ever see, I joke about this, but it's really not joking. They call themselves the elite. You ever see the elite? This is the elite. They're not elite. You're elite. I always take heat. I say, you have better houses. So do I. You have better boats. You have better everything. You have better everything. You're smarter. You know, I say, no, we're the elite. So let's let them be the elite, but we're the super elite. There's not even a contest. There's not even a contest. I always laugh when I hear, they're elite, and then you see this guy and you say, he's not elite. Not in my book, he's not. But we're delighted to be joined tonight by many terrific Florida Republican leaders. They really have been fantastic. And I, you just got a little sample of it, and you're getting a great sample of it, because as your governor, Ron DeSantis has been doing a fantastic job. Where is Ron? Where is he? Thank you, Ron. Great job. Great governor. And along with Ron, you know, is First Lady Casey DeSantis. And your First Lady, Melania, is a big fan of Casey. Big fan. And a man and a senator who's working with me very hard on Venezuela and Cuba and lots of other things. And He's become really a good friend. We had our little squabbles, minor squabbles. But we've come together. He's a, a terrific person, actually. Senator Marco Rubio. Where is he? Thank you, Marco. Great job. Good man. How are we doing in Cuba, Marco? How are we doing in Venezuela, step by step? Step by step. What's happening in Venezuela is disgraceful. People are dying. They have no food. They have no water. This was one of the wealthiest countries, really, in the world. And now they're living so badly, so dangerously. So many people are dying. And we're working hard on that problem. And we're being tough. We're being, we're being, we're being tough. But we have no choice. It's not fair what's happening to those people. Great people. The Venezuelan people, I know them very well. Uh, those people around Doral, the roads, Venezuela, it's called Little Venezuela. I got to know them very well. They're great people. They're great people. Another friend of mine, he was just up, and he was a solid, solid person for the people of Florida when he was governor. He loves the people of Florida. Now he's in Washington. Senator Rick Scott doing a fantastic job. Doing a fantastic job. And we have a lot of members of Congress. Matt Gates, Neil Dunn. Thank you. Thank you, fellas. You have your Florida Lieutenant Governor, Jeanette Nunes. Jeanette. Thank you, Jeanette. Great job. Florida Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Thanks, Ash. And by the way, I just met your great U.S. attorney. Where is he? Where is he? Thank you very much. You are doing a fantastic job. You are doing a fantastic job. Florida CFO, Jimmy Petronas. Jimmy, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Florida GOP chair, and State Senator Joe Gruders. Joe. Thanks, Joe. RNC chairwoman, you know, she won a state, a great state, Michigan. I said, who was that? Now, nobody's won Michigan for decades as a Republican. And we won. So when it came to choosing who the head of the RNC would be, I said, who's that woman that was so great? up in the state of Michigan, because we won that state. We weren't expected to. But, you know, we left. That was the last speech I made. 
And we had 32,000 people show up at 1 o'clock in the morning. It was now Election Day. Think of that. And I left. Think of it. Election Day. And I left and I said, you know, I don't know why we're going to lose. We had 32,000. Our opponent, we want to be nice. Our opponent was there at prime time, like 6 o'clock. And she had 500 people. I said, why are we going to lose Michigan? And you know what? We didn't because Ronna McDaniel was fantastic. And another one who's fantastic, RNC co-chairman Tommy Hicks. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Great job. And we have so many people. Look, we have so many. We could go on all night. But let's get back to business, right? So this is an incredible time for our country. America is thriving again. America is winning again. And America is being respected again. We're respected. In fact, one of the Democrats today said that he, it's a he, sleepy person, said that he heard from a lot of foreign leaders and they want him to be president. Of course they do. So they can continue to rip off the United States. Of course they do. Of course. I think if I heard that, I'd never vote for him. And then you have Bernie. Bernie. Then you have Bernie. You got some real beauties. Crazy Bernie. You got a choice between Slippy Joe and Crazy Bernie. And uh, I'll take any of Let's just pick somebody, please, and let's start this thing. Let's start it. Pick somebody. We have a young man, Boot Edge Edge. Boot Edge Edge. They say Edge Edge. He's got a great chance, doesn't he? He'll be great. He'll be great. Representing us against President Xi of China. That'll be great. That'll be great. I want to be in that room. I want to watch that one. By the way, you see the tariffs we're doing? Because they broke the deal. They broke the deal. They broke the deal. So they're flying in. The vice premier tomorrow is flying in. Good man. But they broke the deal. They can't do that. So they'll be paying. If we don't make the deal, nothing wrong with taking in over $100 billion a year. $100 billion. We never did that before. And we have that happening. A lot of good things happening with a lot of countries. We have a deal with Mexico. We have a deal with Canada. Worst deal, NAFTA. How bad was NAFTA? All the empty buildings, all the empty plants. We have a great deal with Mexico and Canada. We got to get the Dems in the House to approve it. And if they don't, that'll be okay too. We're going to do something else. We'll be just as good, if not better. You always have alternatives, folks. You got to have alternatives. When they want to hold you up, which is a hold up, when they want to hold you up for political reasons, you always have to have alternatives. Got a lot of good alternatives, sometimes better. Some of it's better. Our economy is now the hottest anywhere on earth, and it's the envy of the world. Every time a foreign leader, a president, a prime minister, a king, a queen, a dictator, we got some of them too. Every time they come into the office, they say, congratulations on what you've done for this economy. It's the hottest on earth. It's incredible. Every single time, that's how they start off the conversation. And you know it because the people of Florida are truly benefiting by what we've done internationally and nationally. So thank you. And our policy can be summed up in three very simple words. Jobs, jobs, jobs. The United States economy created another 260,000 jobs last month. Way, way, way above what people thought. They were making predictions much lower. Then the big one, they were thinking about 1%, 1.2%, maybe 1.5. And our growth number came in for the first quarter, which is almost always the lowest quarter of the year, historically. 3.2% crushing expectations. A lot of surprised people. I wasn't surprised. Since the election, we've created nearly 6 million new jobs 
including more than half a million manufacturing jobs and nearly 700,000 new construction jobs. Numbers that if I would have said this during the campaign, those people back there, I call them the fakers, fake news media. The fakers would have said he exaggerated, he exaggerated. They are a bunch of fakers, there's no question about it. But you know, in six years, they're all going to be out of business, folks. They're all going to be out of business. Now, if we want to drive them crazy, I'll say in 10 years, they'll go crazy. See, he is a despot. He is a despot. Well, 10 or 14, let's see, whatever we like, right? Watch, it'll be headlines tomorrow. Donald Trump wants to break constitutionality. <laughs> Unemployment just reached the lowest rate in more than 50 years. The women's unemployment rate is the lowest in more than 65 years and soon will be a record number. Women, women. Remember last election? Oh, he's going to do so bad with women. I did great with women. Great. We did great with women. Hispanic American unemployment just hit another brand new, all-time historic low. African American unemployment recently achieved the lowest rate in the history of our country. More people working today than ever. And likewise, Hispanic American unemployment, lowest in the history of our country. I'm going to like that on the debate stage. You'll be hitting me left, right? Oh. I'll say lowest rates ever in history. Highest income ever in history for the different groups. Highest income. More people are working today in the United States, almost 160 million, than have ever worked in the United States before. And nearly one million more African Americans are employed today than when I took office. Think of that. Think of that. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's what it is. Guy just screamed out 14 more years now. 14 more years. After many years of stagnation, wages are rising very fast. Hasn't happened in 20 years. And they're rising fastest, which makes me feel very good for blue-collar workers, fastest proportionately. And driving our whole agenda is a jobs boom that is historic. Has it happened like this in many, many years, if at all? Certainly during record-keeping has not happened like this. And it has a lot to do with the fact that we've got more federal regulations and regulations than any president in the history of our country. So these great companies now can breathe and hire people. Right? Thank you. And we just passed the largest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history. The largest. And we got rid of the individual mandate of Obamacare, the most unpopular thing. And by the way, we would have repealed and replaced Obamacare, but one vote didn't work out. After campaigning for eight years, this particular person decided at the last moment to go no. It's all right, we'll get it anyway, it doesn't matter. It does. We'll end up getting better, we'll end up doing better. Sometimes, you know, things like that happen, and you get angry, and you get a little bit sad, and then some of you weep, I don't weep, but you don't weep too much. I know too many of you, they never weeped in their life, they didn't weep when they were babies. 
But you get a little bit angry about it, and, and you know what you do? You go and you fight, and it ends up being better than what you were trying to do in the first place. That happens. That happens. And a good one for those of you that love your children, of which I would think probably it's 95%. To keep your family farms and ranches and small businesses in the family. They don't talk about this. We eliminated the unfair estate tax or death tax. So now if you love your child or you love your children and you have a beautiful farm, ranch, small business, it's doing great. You know, the old days meeting like about two years ago, they had to go out, borrow money from a bank, lose their business in many cases. Now you don't have a tax. You don't have a tax. So if you love them, good. If you don't love them, I wouldn't leave it to them and it's not going to matter. It won't help you much. But if you love your family, that's what's going to happen. It's a great thing. We're reducing burdens in our businesses. But in return, we expect American companies to invest in America, which is what we're demanding. To raise wages in America, which is happening. And to hire American workers to do the job. That's what we want. And as I stand here floating around on a piece of ice, this is crazy. I'm a little bit concerned about leaving the podium I'm holding. You have no idea what I'm going through on this stage. This is the worst damn stage I've ever seen. I, I've never seen a, I, I don't know. Stupid people did this one. Uh, no, no, or, or brilliant. Or brilliant, they may be the enemy. If it's the enemy, then they're brilliant, but I want them the hell out of here. <laughs> and we're reversing decades of calamitous trade policies that enrich Wall Street at the expense of Main Street. You see what's happening. Although everyone's doing well right now, everybody. The companies are doing great. When Wall Street does good, that's a good thing for us. A lot of you have 401ks where they're double what you had just a couple of years ago, right? Listen to that. I tell the story, it happens a lot. But for some reason, this big policeman, you might have heard it, but this big, strong guy comes to me. I was in New York, and he said, sir, thank you. My 401k, and that was a year ago. This happens all the time. He said his 401k is up 47%. He said, my wife used to think I was just horrible at investing, and now she thinks I'm the greatest investor in the world. And... I thank you. Now the numbers are much better since then, but that's the 401ks. Everybody's through the roof and we're going to keep it that way. We're going to make it better and stronger and we're going to take in a lot of money from a lot of these countries and other folks that have been ripping us off for a long time. Long time. I mean, we pay for the military and we're defending nations that are so rich. And I say to him, King, you got to do me a favor. You got to pay. But nobody has ever asked for money. I said, no, no, you got to pay. You got to pay. We lose billions and billions of dollars, individual countries. And you know, it's one thing if we're helping people who are being horribly treated and they don't have money and the countries are, it's one thing. It's another thing if we're dealing with countries that are loaded with cash, make a fortune, and we're defending them for a tiny fraction of what it costs. It's ridiculous. So it's all changing, a lot of changes. One country, I won't say the country, but one country we spend a lot of money on, defending. Very dangerous territory. And it costs us $5 billion. And I said to a general, please do me a favor, general, tell me, how much does it cost for us to defend this country, which is very rich? Sir, I will check. He comes in and says, sir, it's $5 billion, sir. I said, that's okay. Now, how much do they pay us? Sir, they pay us... Five hundred million dollars. I say, we lose four and a half million dollars to defend a country that's rich as hell and probably doesn't like us too much. Can you believe it? And we've been defending it for many years. So I called the leader of the country 
I said, you know, it's not fair. We're spending all of this money, great danger. And we have our men and women, they're the best in the world. And we're sending them over to your country. Not fair. You got to pay. You got to pay. And he said, like the king, he said, but nobody's ever asked us that before. I said, that's because you had stupid people running. <laughs> So they said, they said, thank you. He said, I just want to, I could give you a hundred stories like this. He said that uh, we can't do anything now because it passed our so-called parliament. And so we can't, it doesn't come due. When's next year? He said, two months. I said, all right, pay me something now. How much will you pay? We can't pay you more than $500 million. I got to say, there's one phone call, right? So I said, make it 750. <laughs> now that's a long way short of four and a half billion that we're losing. But I said, make it 750. Anyway, we agreed to a number around 500 million. It was one phone call that lasted for 10 minutes. And once they got over the shock of being, they had plenty of money. And now the two months is up. And I just told my people, call them and ask for the rest of it, okay? And they'll pay. They'll pay. But we have many countries like that. I mean, we have many countries like that. We have countries like Saudi Arabia, very rich. Nothing but cash, right? So I think they can afford to pay us, right, for defense? And they will, and you know what, they will. And they're buying a tremendous amount of equipment, $450 billion they'll be spending in our country. 450 billion. But we have a lot of countries that are rich, that we're defending, and they don't even respect it. Honestly, when I ask them, they almost are looking at me saying, I sort of thought, you know, like, it's amazing that nobody's asked us. Now, they don't say that. They're smart. But you feel it. So a lot of countries we're defending. It's not fair what's happening. They're paying us a tiny fraction in some cases. We defend Europe. It's not fair. They're not paying what they should be paying. We'll work it out. But they got to pay their bills. And you know what? In the end, they're going to like us more. And in the end, they're going to respect us. They're going to respect us. Under the previous administration, the United States lost nearly a quarter of a million manufacturing jobs. You remember that. They let other countries raid our factories, steal our jobs, and rob us blind. Other than that, they were very nice. They allowed China to freely loot our economy, plunder our intellectual property, and target our industries for destruction. That's what was happening. And look, President Xi is a friend of mine, great guy, but he was, he's for China. I'm for the USA. I'm for the USA. So, we're going to see. They come in tomorrow, and whatever happens, don't worry about it. It'll all work out. You know why? It always does. Don't worry about it. There's no pressure, because, you know, we're the piggy bank that everybody wants to rub. You understand that. So we have the thing that everybody wants. We're now the biggest market in the world by far. I'll tell you, China was catching us. If another person happened to be in this position right now, first of all, there'd be about 10 people instead of all the people. Hey, I wish the cameras could spin around and show this massive field, you know? They won't do it. They won't do it. They never do it. They don't like to show it. And you know, I actually try and explain the ones that are semi-friendly. I said, you know, it's good for your production value to do that. Your production values are much better. Yep, let them know it. Now look at this field. They never show it. They will show the people behind me. Congratulations. They may have a lousy seat. But you know what? They'll be famous tomorrow. <laughs> but it is true, they never like to show the crowds. I went to Texas and I made a speech. And Beto, Beto, 
Boy, is he falling like a rock. What the hell happened to Beta? So we went to El Paso, and I made a speech, and we had an arena that holds eight or 9,000 people. The arena was packed. We had 35,000 people outside. We had these massive movie screens outside, so those people that couldn't get in could see. He had 502 people. The next day in the news, the New York Times guy actually wrote a story that he thinks that he had more people than me. Can you believe this? No, no, can you believe it? No, so dishonest. And most of them just said two massive crowds were in it. Well, his crowd was not massive. He had like 502 people, according to the people that count crowds. So we get a very bum press, but that's okay, because we're here and they're not, right? We're here and they're not. A very dishonest people. And maybe it'll change. You know, what's wrong with having a strong military, good education, a strong economy? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. The hatred is incredible, but let's just keep it going, folks, because that's the way it is. But the great betrayal of the American middle class ended the day that I took the oath of office, because I'm with you. I'm with you. And there are those that say, even the fake news media, there are those that say it was the greatest day in the political history of this country. It's the greatest election. And it continues, you know, because they keep trying to take it away. Let's try to take it away. That's not working too well. That's not working. But for think of it. I mean, Hillary Clinton's still going up. Uh, I think they stole the election. But no, she lost. She lost. The next time. No, no. The next time. <laughs> The next time, she's got to go to Wisconsin to campaign. You know, it hadn't been lost in decades. The people are great in Wisconsin. You have to go there and campaign. The people said, oh, you'll be okay. The Republicans haven't won the great state of Wisconsin in decades. You got to go there. I went there a lot. And in all fairness, her husband, Bill, who's a good politician, they didn't listen to him. He said, you better go to Wisconsin. You better go to Michigan. I'm seeing a lot of things out there. I see a lot of signs. Trump, Pence, Mike Pence, is he doing a good job, by the way? <laughs> doing a good job. And his wife, Karen, is doing a great job. Mike. But I see a lot of Trump, Pence signs out there on the lawns. You better go there. And they sort of said, what the hell does he know? Well, he's a pro. He's a pro. He knew a lot better than their analysts. Their analysts weren't so good. But you have to go and you have to work. And we are officially, in a couple of weeks, we're starting. Can you believe? I got to the White House two and a half years ago. And the first night, I stood on the area, the beautiful residence, they call it. It's beautiful. I said to Melania, do you believe this? It's going to be so long. It seemed like four years would never happen. And now we're a year and a half away, less. Think of it. It's incredible how time flies, especially when, despite the obstacles and the artificial things they put in your path, especially when you love what you're doing. And more importantly, I love the results of what's happening because you hear them. You hear them. So I just announced we'll increase tariffs on China. Now, we won't back down until China stops cheating our workers and stealing our jobs. And that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, we don't have to do business with them. We don't have to do business. We can make the product right here if we have to, like we used to. Remember? Like we used to. The era of economic surrender is over. The last administration also signed a disastrous trade deal with South Korea that cost our country nearly 100,000 jobs, but it was really 250,000 jobs. And if you remember, our Secretary of State at the time and our President at the time said, this will give 250,000 jobs. And he and she were right, except it was for South Korea, not for us. It's a loser. 
And we totally renegotiated the Korea trade deal to restore these jobs and rescue the American auto industry, because that was going to be a tremendous hit. And that deal is done. South Korea. And right before I came into office, our nation was being signed up for a one-sided, single sellout, like you've never seen, of the American worker. And I said, it's not going to happen. The Trans-Pacific Partnership was going to destroy our automobile industry like you've never seen before. And our automobile industry is pouring back into our country. And today, for the people of the great state of Ohio, remember, you have to win the great state of Ohio. Boy, did we win it. We won it by like nine points. It's a great state. So everyone's coming back in. Toyota's coming in. Honda's coming in. Many, many car companies. Uh, General Motors today just announced three big plants, 450 workers, 700 million. But the big announcement is in Lordstown, Ohio. They're going to be selling that plant to Workhorse, it's called. They make electric trucks because the enemy, with all of the companies pouring into Michigan, all of the companies pouring into Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Ohio, everywhere, with all of these companies, they kept hitting me with Lordstown because General Motors closed it. Well, they did the right thing. They sold it to a company that's going to do a great job with that beautiful plant. And that happened just a little while ago. Just a minute. They'll be spending a lot of money on fixing it up. It's subject to the UAW. They got to get out there and make a deal, UAW. Come on. Got to make a deal. But that's a great thing, right? Because that was the only thing they could hit me with. The whole, they could never hit me with anything because we've been so good. But they said, what about Lordstown? What about Lordstown? I call up Mary Barrow. Will you make a deal or open it, please? I'm getting killed with that plant. Anyway, today she called. They're going to be opening. It's going to be a great company going there. It's really wonderful. In another historic action, we finalized an agreement to replace the horrible NAFTA trade deal with the brand new U.S. MCA, like the song, MCA. The USMCA will mean countless more jobs for Florida farmers, ranchers, and growers, and manufacturers. But while we're unleashing an unprecedented wave of prosperity, the Democrat Party is trying to return us to the failures of yesterday. They want to have things rejected because they're all waiting for 2020. They think the more they could hurt us, the worse they make us look. I think they're making us look better, personally. I really do. I really do. I mean, they want to do investigations instead of investments. They want to do what they're doing, which looks so foolish. And maybe I read it wrong. But I think it drives us right on to victory in 2020. Because people get it. People get it. But our country... The great USA is not being pushed around anymore. Nothing is more dangerous than the Democrats' crazy immigration agenda. Democrats believe that everyone in the world has the right to violate our borders. They want open borders, disrespect our laws, and come into our country and collect benefits courtesy of the United States taxpayer. Thank you very much. So despite the fact, and you see the hell we're going through trying to get the wall, which by the way works. They say we want to give him drones. We want to give him technology. Without the wall, nothing works, folks. You know that. So we're going to have over 400 miles of wall built. It's already, but much of it's already started by the end of next year. And we'll conclude it pretty shortly thereafter. We'll have the whole thing sealed up and it'll be a lot easier. It's very tough when you have the worst laws on immigration, the worst loopholes, catch and release. You catch somebody and then you have to release them. Oh, that's a wonderful plan. 
chain migration, you come in and you bring your whole damn family. And if you're no good, you got people all over the place. This is chain migration. The other one is visa lottery. It's a lottery. Who's coming to the United States? So these countries put people in a basket like little... You know, who is it? Who is it? Ah, uh, let's see. Come oh, on, that's beautiful. This, uh, isn't he like a stone-cold killer? Yeah. Take the... United Tell me, if the United States is accepting people under a lottery system, compliments of Chuck Schumer, if they're accepting people under a lottery system, do you actually think that the country is giving us their finest? No. No. They're giving us some rough people. I won't say it. If you remember when I made the speech at the base of Trump Tower, I talked about what's happening. I mentioned the word rape. I was absolutely, by the fake news media, they went after me. Guess what? That speech was so mild compared to what's actually happening that you read it today and it's like unbelievable. But Democrats say they care about the poor, but their open border policies drive down wages, drain social services and hurt the poorest Americans more than anybody else. And the crime that comes in is unbelievable. You don't read it. They don't want to talk about it. Sanctuary City is a total disaster. Republicans believe that you, the American citizen, have the absolute right to have your laws and borders enforced and enforced strongly. It's your country. We believe that our welfare program should be protected for truly needy Americans not for illegal aliens that come into our country illegal. We believe that our immigration system should put the jobs and safety of American families first. We want to help people, and we want to be gracious, and we want people, we need people, frankly, because we have so many companies moving into our country. We're the hottest country. They want to move their plants. We need people. They have to come in through merit. Merit. Last month alone, 100,000 illegal aliens were apprehended at our borders. You know what that is? They catch them. They take their name. They have to bring them to a court. They take them into a court. Then they have to release them because we have tens of thousands of people in detention bays. And they can't release them. Now, we did win a great court case last night. Go back to Mexico. Go back to Mexico. And I told Mexico very nicely that you can't let people walk 2,000 miles up your country because if we do that, we're going to close our border. If we have any more, we're going to close our border. We're going to do it. I don't care what it costs. We'll close our border. So Mexico now, for the first time, has been taking people back to Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador and other countries. And for the first time, not big enough numbers, but they're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. We can't have this, folks. We can't have this. This is crazy what's happening. And what we really need more than anything else, we need the loopholes closed by Congress. It would take 15 minutes. Everybody knows what they are. Asylum. Asylum. They walk in, they read a statement by a lawyer, written by a lawyer at the border, who probably gets paid by somebody that's not exactly friendly to this crowd. I am very fearful of my life. My country is a very frightening place to be. Please help me. In the meantime, there's tattoos all over his face. And I say, no, no, he's the one that causes the fright. And he comes in and he talks about his country. But then they have a picture of him five days sooner, walking up, flying the national flag of their country. So if he's so afraid of his country, why is he flying the flag of the country, right? Flying the flag. They want to fly the flag of Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador right into our border. Save that flag. We love our country. We love our country, but we're afraid of it. For purposes of getting into the United States, we're afraid of our country. No, we can't let this happen. The Democrats, we need the votes. We have to, we need the votes. Otherwise, you're going to have to vote them out of office, Congress, the Senate. You're going to have to vote them out of office. 
come November, next November, November 3rd, next year, you're going to have to vote him out of office because otherwise you can't make a change. We need the votes. We have to go through Congress. How we ever ended with this stuff is incredible. But they don't mind it so much because they don't mind crime. They don't mind crime. No nation can tolerate a massive, organized violation of its immigration laws. And no one should run for office without an ironclad pledge to protect and defend America's borders. Shouldn't be allowed to run. And to confront this crisis, you saw that. It was a big deal two months ago. I declared a national emergency, which is what it is. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20 thousand people. That's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. And it's also an invasion of drugs coming in from Mexico, okay? It's an invasion of drugs. They all better be careful, because you know, we're destroying the lives of hundreds of thousands of people a year with the drugs that are pouring across our southern border. They better damn well be careful, because people are wise to it now. They have drug dens and drug labs and factories right along the border. They make the crap right there, and they send it over our border where we don't have walls. They drive it right through because we have 2,000 miles between the Gulf and the Pacific. 2,000 miles. Now, a lot of it, you don't need the wall because it's mountains, it's big, strong rivers, it's snake country. Nobody's walking through certain areas. you got to like snakes a lot. They got some rough country. But we need and what we need will have done. But they can't do this. They can't let this happen. And we're being very tough with them, I'll be honest. Mexico made a hundred billion dollars on average over the last ten years. Hundred billion. They took thirty percent almost of our automobile business. We make cars, they send them through the United States. That won't happen anymore under the USMCA. It'll be prohibited. It'll be economically prohibited. Our current immigration crisis is the result of Democrat-backed policies that prevent border crosses from being swiftly returned home. A border crosser comes in, you say, sorry, we're taking you home. And that's if you're nice, and I want to do that. Okay? But we're the only one that has judges. Judges. Think of it. They come across, we have judges. We're the only one. Nobody else has judges. We give them a trial. We need Perry Mason. It's crazy. <laughs> Folks, it's crazy. And then they say, and the wall would help because it would not help. The wall would stop it. Okay? The wall would stop it. I mean, when you have 15,000 people marching up and you have hundreds and hundreds of people and you have two or three border security people that are brave and great, and don't forget, we don't let them, and we can't let them use weapons. We can't. Other countries do. We can't. I would never do that. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no... That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. Only in the panhandle. So it's a tough situation, but if they change the loopholes, we'll have it perfectly. And when the wall is finished, it's going to be great. Democrats even supported deadly sanctuary cities, which release dangerous criminal aliens onto our streets. They're protected. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. Congress must act to fix our horrible immigration laws. We must end catch and release. Stop human smugglers. Have you seen what's happening? Human smugglers, human traffickers. Have you seen what they're doing? This is an ancient thing. It's an ancient crime. It's bigger now because of the computer, because of the Internet, than ever before worldwide. Not just here, worldwide. And most come through our southern border where we don't have a wall. They don't go through ports of entry. You have people looking inside the car, the van. So you can't do that. If you have women tied up with tape over their mouths, you can't take them through a port of entry. 
And a lot of these people say, oh, they come through the port. They don't come through the port. They come through areas where you don't have the wall. 15 miles up and make a left. We got to shut down sanctuary cities, deport criminal aliens, and replace the visa lotteries, the chain migrations, with a modern system of immigration. We have to do it. On issue after issue, the Democrat Party has never been further outside the American mainstream. It's never been. I've never heard of anything like what's going on. I want to run so badly. I want this race to start immediately. Now Democrats are pushing a $100 trillion takeover of the U.S. economy known as the Green New Deal. That was written up by a real genius. The new Democrat Party believes in socialism. Take a look at Venezuela. Republicans believe in freedom. We need to get senators elected. We need to get the votes. We need congressmen and women elected. Republicans, we need to get the votes. You got to get out there. You got to win. Otherwise, we'll be playing around for too long. And Democrats are aggressively pushing late-term abortion, allowing children to be ripped from their mother's womb right up until the moment of birth. And then you have this governor in Virginia. You saw that. The baby is born, and you wrap the baby beautifully, and you talk to the mother about the possible execution of the baby. No, can't do that. So who heard of that one? And that came up, and that's now something, and they don't even want to discuss it. They don't even want to discuss it. And to protect innocent life, I called on Congress to immediately pass legislation prohibiting extreme late-term abortion. <laughs> Democrats are now the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, witch hunts, and delusions. The Republican Party is the party for all Americans. We want to make America great again. That's what we're doing. I wish the cameras. Will you please show these people? I go home, you know, you hear it. You hear it. You can hear how many people, but they never show it. They don't want to do it. It's like a Florida or Florida State football game, isn't it, right? We are the party of the American worker, the American family. And we are the party of the American dream. Every day we're making very, very good on our motto. In fact, much better than we promised. And you know what it is? It's promises made, promises kept. We've actually given you more promises. And a couple of my opponents said this. They weren't happy about it. But we've given you more promises than we said we would do. That's very unusual for a politician. That may be a first. Earlier this year, I signed an executive order to defend free speech on college campuses. Do you see what I'm And we are carefully monitoring the actions of social media giants. Big tech must not censor conservative or other voices. And we are also taking steps to address judicial overreach. Activist judges whose issue... That's right. You know about that, right? We did a big thing. And the Democrats hate that I did this. Because you know who started this in reverse? It was Bill Clinton when he was president. Because activist judges who issue nationwide injunctions based on their personal beliefs undermine democracy and threaten the rule of law. Take a look at what we did 
for criminal justice reform. Nobody thought it could be done, and we passed it. And it's tough as hell, but it's also fair. It's fair. That's why we're appointing judges who will interpret the Constitution as written. And we just confirmed, listen to this, our 100th federal judge. And we'll soon be in record territory, not to mention two great Supreme Court judges. We've got two great Supreme Court justices. What a difference. And having them up there makes you feel good about your country, doesn't it? Makes you feel good about your country. We've launched a historic initiative to reduce the price of prescription drugs. We're doing big. Last year, prescription drug prices went down for the first time in nearly 51 years. Just today, we announced that the drug companies will now be required by law to include prices in television advertisements. First time. It's going to drive the price down. And we're vastly expanding affordable alternatives to Obamacare before we terminate it and replace it with something good once we take over the House, the Senate, the presidency together. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions, always. The Republican Party will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions, people with pre-existing conditions. And for the veterans, we passed VA Choice, right? So now if they wait in line for two weeks, three weeks, ten days, Four days, two months, people that weren't even very sick or terminally ill before they get to see a doctor, they immediately go outside, find a good local doctor, get themselves fixed up, and we pay the bill. And it's a great thing for our veterans. They've been trying to get it passed for 44 years. We got it passed. And we also passed 46 years they've been trying. VA accountability. Because under the VA, you couldn't fire anybody. If they were terrible to our great vets, they could be sadistic, they could steal, they could rob, they could do anything. We had no way of firing these people. Now we passed VA accountability. They don't treat our vets right. Boom, you're fired. 46 years they tried to get that. A little hard working. I mean, in that case, it was against the unions and against civil service. Not too easy. We're unlocking American energy. The United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. One. We're slashing permitting delays for vital infrastructure projects. We had highways that would take 21 and 22 years to get approved. We brought it way down. We're trying to make it one year. We're close to getting that. We're down to two or three at the most. This was taking 21. There was a certain road in a certain state. They were working on it for 21 years. It cost hundreds of times more money. It used to be a straight line. Now it's a line like this. If you had a couple of drinks, you had a very bad shot of making it home. <laughs> cost a fortune. 21 years. Now we're trying to get it down to one year. And maybe it gets rejected for environmental reasons. That's okay. But you have people that worked on projects almost for their entire life. And then they go to a vote of some council and they lose three to two. No, you may get rejected, but it's going to take a year, year and a half. But mostly you're not going to get rejected. It's going to be done in a really good way. So we're trying to get that permitting process down for roads, for highways, for bridges, for tunnels, for everything. There's no reason it should be taking 20 years. And as promised, we've directed more than a half a billion dollars to fix Lake Okeechobee's Herbert Hoover Dyke. Everybody wanted that done. Your governor, both your governors, your last governor and your current governor wanted that done. So we have the Army Corps of Engineers are doing a fantastic job and they're getting it done. It'll now be completed in three years, way ahead of schedule, years ahead of schedule. 
And I was out there eight weeks ago, and it was incredible. And earlier this year, I signed legislation providing $100 million to fight the red tide that harms coastal regions, especially in Florida. The red tide. Doesn't look too inviting. I come down to Florida, I say, what the hell is that? It's a red tide. So we're going to get rid of it. And to keep America safe, we're rebuilding America's military might like never before, including $133 million for the Gulf Coast Test Range. You know what that is, Gulf? Anybody there? Anybody like practice shooting? Trust me, it's a good thing for you folks. You don't have to shoot. It's a good thing. $133 million. The military needs it so badly. And it's going to be very quickly completed. And many other enhancements in the great state of Florida to help our wonderful warriors who are doing such an incredible job. As an example, at Eglin Air Force Base. Eglin. Eglin. Great people. And we have made a decisive break from the failed foreign policy establishment that sacrificed our sovereignty, surrendered our jobs, and tied us down to endless foreign wars. I don't know if you saw, but about eight weeks ago, we took 100% of the caliphate. It was supposed to take two years in Syria, ISIS. That doesn't mean that they're not going to go around. These people are stone cold crazy. And it doesn't mean they don't go around blowing up a store and blowing up some. They are just nuts. But we took 100 percent. And when I took over this helm, this great country, we were way behind. You had to see. I showed the map. It was all so much ISIS. And within a short period of time, we wiped it out. The caliphate, we have 100 percent. But still, still, it's a mental condition. These people are sick. They're crazy. They're crazy. So always keep your eyes open. Be careful. And let law enforcement know when you see a kook. Let them know. Because we have the greatest law enforcement on earth. Let them know. In everything we do, we are now putting America first for years. We lost in so many different ways. We were losing on trade. We were getting beaten by people and countries that had no chance. We were insisting that no NATO members, you had to see this, the NATO folks, they don't pay their fair share. They were supposed to pay. We were taking over and spending almost 100% of our money to protect the countries in NATO, which is Europe. And I said, that's not right. On top of that, the EU absolutely kills us on trade. It's all changing, folks. $100 billion extra was just given by those countries that's now pouring into NATO. Because they said, you got to pay up. Your past presidents would go and meet them and wouldn't talk about it. Or they'd say, gee, uh, whenever you get a chance, maybe you could pay up. You had to see. It was like a chart this way. Now it's a chart like a rocket ship the other one. They're paying up. Hundred billion dollars they paid. Hundred billion with a B. Last month I announced that my administration is unsigning the UN Arms Trade Treaty, which is great for your Second Amendment. We love our Second Amendment. And we will never allow foreign bureaucrats to trample on that very precious Second Amendment and your rights under the Second Amendment. I also withdrew the United States from the horrible Iran nuclear deal. And unfortunately, just today, I felt compelled to authorize new sanctions on Iran's iron, steel, aluminum, and copper industries. Because I hope to be able, at some point, maybe it won't happen, possibly won't, to sit down and work out a fair deal. We're not looking to hurt anybody. We want a fair deal. We just don't want them to have nuclear weapons. That's all we want. 
I recognized Israel's capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And just two weeks ago, I announced that the United States would recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That's a big deal. And as rockets rained down on Israel, we reaffirmed America's solidarity with the citizens of Israel in their fight against terror. They have done uh, just a great job. It's a dangerous place. The Middle East is a dangerous place. We also recognize the legitimate government of Venezuela, and we forcefully condemn the socialist brutality of the Maduro regime. And our hearts are united with the people of Venezuela and many of their relatives who are here right now with us tonight, the people of Cuba and the people of Nicaragua in their struggle to be free. It'll all happen, folks. It'll all happen. Each of us in this great arena, sort of arena, it doesn't have a roof, but these are minor details. <laughs> Problem is, if we had a roof, you could never hold this many people, so. We're all united by the same timeless values. We believe in the American Constitution, and we believe in the rule of law. We believe in strong borders, strong families, and a strong national defense. We believe in the dignity of work and in the sanctity of life. We believe in religious liberty, the right to free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We believe that mothers and fathers, not government regulators, know best how to raise our children and teach our great country's values. And we believe in the words of our national motto, in God we trust. These are the traditions, customs, and principles that bind us together as neighbors, as citizens, as Americans. These are the values that unite people in the panhandle. Panhandle. Oh, we love the panhandle. You all love the panhandle? I think so. You're incredible people. I tell you, you're incredible people. You're smart, you're loyal, you're unbelievable people. But all across the magnificent state of Florida and all over our country, you joined our movement because you rejected the failures and betrayals of past politicians. You stared down a corrupt system that enriched itself at your expense. The system is rigged. I used to say it. It's still rigged, but a lot less rigged. We're getting rid of a lot of the rigging rapidly, folks. You reclaimed your destiny. You defended your dignity. And you took back your country. You have always been loyal to this nation. Now you finally have a president who is loyal to you. Yeah. Thank you. And every day between now and November 3rd, 220, I think of that. November 3rd, 2020. Boy, it's close, huh? But every day we're going to keep on working, we're going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. Remember, I used to tell the story that your governor would come to see me and you'd be winning so much in the state of Florida. Governor Ron, he'd say, President, please, in the Oval Office, 
Please, we're winning too much. We're not used to this, Mr. President. We're not used to this. For years and years, we've been losers. We've been losing, Mr. President. Now we're winning. We're winning so much. The people of Florida can't stand winning so much. Can you maybe pull it back a little bit, Mr. President? And I said, no, I can't run. I'm sorry. He said, I thought you'd say that. We're going to keep winning. We've never been winning like we're winning now. You've never had better numbers. You've never had, I think, more loyalty. You look at what's happening to this state and you look at what's happening to this country and we're proud again. We're proud again. With every last ounce of heart and hope and sweat and soul, we are going to make our stand. We are going to stand for liberty. We are going to stand for justice. We are going to stand for faith, family and freedom. And we are going to stand for the sacred rights given to us by the hand of Almighty God. We are one united movement, one united people, and one United States of America. And together with the proud people of the Panhandle, the proud people of Florida, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Florida. Thank you very much.